again, everybody. I'm Joe McConnell, along with John Mengel, speaking to you from the Horizon in Rosemont, Illinois. Tonight, the DePaul Blue Demons play the Redbirds of Illinois State. Well, John, if you were Joey Meyer, you're minus your big man from a year ago, Dallas Comagees, and you're also minus your point guard, Rod Strickland, who may or may not be back Wednesday night. How do you go about preparing for Illinois State? Well, the first thing I do is I tell anybody who can get 10 rebounds is going to play. I mean, they need to get the ball off the board. There's no doubt about that. The other thing I think they have to do is establish a game down low. They have to get Stanley Brunney in position to score down low. That's the next thing. I think Bill Hefner's got to play. I think I got to tell Bill to relax, go out and play. Don't worry about me substituting for you. Just go out and do it. The other thing is you got to shoot free throws, not think of them. Well, DePaul has had their problems in the free throw line. They're only shooting 50% after two ball games, but they've had two two guys deliver as far as the scoring's concerned. Kevin Edwards with a 24-point average, and T. Green, T. Green, a, a, a junior from Flint, Michigan, averaging 29 points a ball game. He had a career high of 25 the first night, and an even bigger night of 33 in the overtime win against Niagara here the other night. For Illinois State, it's been Jeff Harris and Jeff Hollifield. Harris is a great three-point gunner. He hit five three-pointers against Purdue, but Illinois State comes in here, John, winless in two starts. They lost by seven at home to Purdue in a good ball game, and then they went up to Wisconsin University at Green Bay and got beat by seven, and I think maybe they were a little flat for that ball game. Well, I think they were. You know, they, they've got eight out of their top ten guys back from last year. Tap worn out, of course, with an injury. They had a lot of expectations, and the Purdue game left them kind of flat. You know, the, Wisconsin Green Bay is not that bad, so... It's a game that they have to win tonight. They have to come out really far in the play. We should see a real high-powered ball game. Illinois State hasn't lost their first three since 1974. All right, John Mengelt will be back with assistant coach Jim Molinari and the scouting report on the Redbirds, and we'll have the lineups and the play-by-play -play in just a moment. And Jim, the Redbirds from Illinois State are pretty experienced, even though Tap Horn's out. You know, John, they always play us tough. And this year they have Cliff Peterson, Tony Hollifield, and Jeff Harris. They're all averaging double figures. They're all seniors. They played a lot of ball for Illinois State. Plus you're playing that Bobby Knight type system. Tough man-to-man -man defense and motion offense. I think it'll be a great game for the fans and a great test for us. You think they'll try to take it down low offensively? I think so. I think they'll try to use their experience. They know we haven't done real well inside. I was telling someone the other day, the only way we get action shots of our inside guys is a two-line layup. So we're a young team, and I think that's what they'll try to take advantage of. Okay, thanks a lot. Good luck, Coach. And now, Joe, over to Joe for the starting lineup. All right, John, and here are the starting lineups for tonight's ballgame. The Illinois Redbirds, Illinois State Redbirds of Bloomington Normal, Illinois, coached by Bob Donawald, who has won 177 games. This is his 10th year as the head coach of the Redbirds. The first man out is a six foot three inch sophomore from Richwood High School in Peoria, Randy Blair, averaging just a point and a half a ball game. He's been moved up into the starting forward slot after starting the first ball game against Purdue at the guards position. Cliff Peterson, a 6'8 senior from Denby High School in Detroit, averaging 13 points and eight and a half rebounds a game for the Redbirds, the next man out at forward. Well, at center tonight, they're going to start the uh, big youngster, John Pemberton. This is a surprise. A 6'9 sophomore from Bloomingdale, Illinois, two-point average. Jeff Harris, 6'4 senior from Lawrence North High School in Indianapolis, averaging 18 and a half points a game at one guard, number 23. And Todd Starks, a junior at 6'3 from South High School in Fort Wayne, the career leader, should say the single season record holder in both assists and steals for Illinois State in the year, averaging five points a game. Todd Starks, the other guard. There's Bob Donawald, a native of Indiana. In fact, they got his coaching start as an assistant for Bobby Knight down at Indiana. Now for Joey Meyer and the Blue Demons. Stanley Brundy from Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles, a 6'7 junior with an eight-point average and ten and a half rebounds a game. Terrence T. Green, the 6'4 junior from Central High School in Flint, Michigan, 29 points of all game with nine caroms a contest so far. At center number 55, 6'9 senior from Jackson, Michigan, Kevin Golden, averaging four points and four boards a game. They need more out of Kevin. In the backcourt, Senior track captain along with Kevin Golden and Kevin Edwards is Andy Locks, a 6'5 senior from Elmhurst, a 12-point average. He's hit 8 of 18 from three-point territory. And there's Kevin Edwards, 6'3 senior from Cleveland Heights, Ohio, averaging 24 a game with 17 assists on the year and six and a half rebounds so far per game. Joey Meyer, his fourth year at DePaul. He's won 66 and lost 27, replacing his Papa Ray here at the helm of the Blue Demons. Our referees tonight 
Two from the Big Ten and one from the Missouri Valley Conference. Ed Hightower from Alton, Illinois. Bob Showalter of Newcastle, Indiana. And Paul Castor is a Missouri Valley official. He hails from Omaha, Nebraska. Joe, I'm very surprised that uh, Hollifield is not starting. I am too. You'd think uh, we have not heard anything that he's injured or is any kind of disciplinary action. You'd think that Coach Donawal would really want to establish a, a game down in the paint because really that's where the Blue Demons have been weak so far this year. You'd think that uh, they wanted to bang and bruise him down low and put the ball up and play any over. So it should be real interesting uh, to see how he uses Hollifield in this game. Well, I think in all probability, Donawal is very unhappy with Hollifield's performance up at Green Bay. He had a fine ball game against Purdue. He's averaging 14 points a game uh, so far in the first two starts for Illinois State. And I have a feeling that he's probably going to bench uh, Hollifield the first five or six minutes of this ball game and then uh, hope that he'll uh, light a fire under his tail. Same one of Bobby Knight messages, huh? <laughs> if you don't do what I say, you're going to sit next to me. The Redbirds in their road red uniforms. DePaul, of course, in the home whites with the blue and red piping. All set to go here at the Rosemont Horizon. I think DePaul has to be a little more selective with their shots in this ball game. I think even though they're shooting a decent percentage, 43, they have to be more selective. I think uh, people from Bloomington Normal came up here in force tonight. Good crowd on hand tonight as we start this interstate rivalry. Laos lost the ball, picked up by Brundy as Andy battered it into the circle. T. Green by nice side. Brundy up and in. Nice feet, you're right, from T. Green to Stanley Brundy, and the Blue Demons break out on top of the layup. Green drew a lot of traffic, three people there as he drove to the hoop, and Brundy was wide open. Nice pass. Starks. Harris, baseline, gives underneath Peterson, up off the glass and in for the right side to draw the tie and the foul against the ball. Well, kind of both clubs have started off kind of identical, you know. The leading scorer takes the ball, goes to the basket, draws a lot of traffic. Jeff Harris, there you see him. He's a, he's a real bright guy, 3.4 and 3 med. So he's a smart player, not real quick, but he passes off to Peterson, and Peterson gets the hoop. The only difference was that the Redbirds drew a foul. Now on Stanley Brundy, Peterson at the line, drills a three-point play, the 67 percenter prior to that free throw, and Illinois State has taken their first lead of the game at 3-2. You see Kevin Edwards, he has to handle the ball a lot now without Rodney Strickland. It's a change for him. Starks was benched in the uh, opening game against Purdue last year. Starks set Indiana State record, uh, Illinois State record in both assists and steals. So he had a fine year last year. He's averaging five points through the first two games of this season. T. Green double team goes off to Edwards. Baseline right coming. Scores. Falling the water fell down after he made the shot. Four to three to fall. A little Hollywood there to try to ball the foul. Again, T. Green on nice penetration finds the open man. Joey must have uh, had a little talk with him. T. Although averaging 29 points a game and 53% from the field, still has taken a lot of bad shots early in the year. Jeff Harris working against Lauf threw it away. Starks cut through the lane, but uh, he wasn't looking for the ball. Harris tried to hit the cutter, and nobody looked for it, and he just threw it away underneath. So DePaul will bring it up. Blue Demons leading 4-3 to three early. Edwards against Starks. Golden sets the high post pick. Going to go underneath. Brundy oh. out off the glass. Harris has it knocked loose by one of his own two. They picked up by Brundy. This is the ball down There's shot. the problem, Joe. Brundy scraps, stays after the ball. He's the only guy on the board. Five Redbirds on the board. you got a rebound. Harris, right side. He can bury it from outside. Baseline checked by Louts. Starks puts up the long jumper, blocked by Brundy. Loose on the floor. We got a foul in the backcourt against the Redbirds of Illinois State. Well, Stanley Brundy, very active so far tonight. Nice move offensively down here to get a shot. He blew the shot, got his own rebound, but couldn't have the ball. And now he gets a block on the defensive end. He's very active. Foul is on Starks, Todd Starks. Junior from Fort Wayne. One four set for the Blue Demons. Cross court, locks open for three point range. Andy Green is the first three point shot of the year. Well, Andy and Jeff Harris play a lot alike. They get those feet lined up, get in that range, and they're going to bury that three pointer. Starks had it knocked loose, gets it back. 7 4 early. DePaul leading by three. Starks right wing looking for Harris, but he's covered up by T. Green. Peterson swings out high on the left wing to get it. A lot of movement in that offense. Blair with it to the start. Bobby Knight style. We said before Bobby Donald played uh, Coach Hunter Bobby Knight. And we got oh, a shove. Foul. Yeah, an elbowing foul on Cliff Peterson under the basket. His first, second against Illinois State. I didn't see the foul. 
Illinois State doing a very nice job executing their offense, very patient, trying to look for that open shot. Did draw for an elbowing foul. Andy Laux has hit nine out of 19 three-point shots. All 27 points he has scored so far in two-plus games this year come from three-point territory. There's a foul. Edwards put up that uh, jumper from the left side, came down about a foot short of the rim, but he was packed on the way, and he'll go to the line with a pair. That time, Edwards, that came down in a 2-3 lineup. T. Green out front playing guard with Edwards. He threw the ball to the strong side, went across the weak side, and the ball came back to him on a double screen down, and he drew the foul. There's Joey's record since uh, he took over as the number one man here at DePaul. Kevin Edwards at the line, shooting 68.5% on 13 of 19, now 70% on 14 of 20 as he hit his first try tonight. That gives him three points in the game. Even though, even though Kevin Edwards is averaging 24 points a game, I think playing point guard has really affected his overall shooting, both from the field and yeah. from the free throw line. He's got to be thinking about being a playmaker, and that's really not his style. 46% for the floor. 68% for the line, which is about 12% under what he shot last year. Pemberton oh, underneath the basket. By Pemberton on Laux. Laux. Yeah, Laux fouled him as he that went up to the shot. That foul. Joy wants it. He should be. Uh, now, that's not, he's saying he didn't do anything. Yeah. Laux came down to do what anybody would do, as we're going to see. He's going to foul. Give him the two. Watch the, watch the foul. Look at the, oh, he hit him. the swing. There's no doubt about it he hit him. Absolutely no doubt as we look at it again. Andy Laux, you know, you're told in this kind of situation, don't let him have the easy two. Here's the swing right there. Yep. That definitely is a, a flagrant swinging technical foul that I don't understand why three referees should miss it. Although they're doing the right thing here and bringing it in. They're going to stop all this early. Eight to three. DePaul, a six-point run and a five-point lead. Of course, we had a fracas here the other night in the waning moments of overtime in DePaul's 88-87 win over Niagara that led to an unusual seven-point possession for Niagara with four straight free throws and a three-pointer that cut an eight-point lead to one in the final nine seconds. Pemberton at the line will shoot a pair. He's averaging two points a game. He drills the first one. That's his first free throw try of the year. He is a 6'9 sophomore from Bloomingdale, Illinois. Played at Lake Park High School. It's his first start. No, Ed Hightower did the right thing after I think the referees missed the call. And I don't know which referee was under there. He gathered everybody together and said he's not going to have any of that stuff. Eight to five, Blue Demons by three. Edwards out front, guarded by Starks. Golden sets that high post pick again. T. Green with it. Working in, give and go to Brindley underneath. Up and in. Good pick and roll. That's the oldest play in the book. Yep. Again, T. Green draws a lot of traffic, and Brindley gets an easy hoop. T. Green hasn't scored yet tonight, but he has three assists, and DePaul leads 10 to 5. DePaul a little bit more tenacious on defense. And then Green to let Blair oh, go, but it's blocked underneath by Lauf. Grundy gives to Edwards. Kevin into the fourth court. Could that be an omen? I don't know. <laughs> Out front at the point to Lauf. Now to Green. Both teams right now playing good overplay defense. Lauf on the left wing. And Edwards, fadeaway jumper, rimmed out, tipped off the glass, and tipped in a second try by Brundy, I believe. I don't know who tipped it in. Brundy and Green both I up there. I think they gave it to T. Green. Both of them up there, and somebody yep. has sent a message to the Demons to hit the offensive boards. Terrence Green got the tip in. 12-5, Blue Demons by seven. Green's first deuce of the game. Blair out front. Swings it to Harris, guarded by Laux. Harris had a big ball game against Purdue. Redbirds were up in that ball game with about four minutes to go and finally lost in the late seconds. Harris leads inside, tried to use the glass, won't go. Rebound, Peterson up. Oh, blew a layup. Golden shoved in the rear by Pemberton as he tried to yank that one down. Here's the pick and roll. Beautiful play by T. Green. Draw a lot of traffic. Any score is going to draw a lot of traffic. Another guy is going to be open. Here's the tip. T. Green. <laughs> Looked like he kind of tried to grab the ball and bring it down, but accidentally lost it up into the hoop. Better we got, than good. We've got our first time out of the game with 15-24 left to go here in the first half. Joey Meyer talking it over with his assistants. DePaul leads by seven. The Blue Demons have beaten Illinois State in 15 of the 17 previous meetings. There's the 15-2 record in this series. Last year it was a 61-53 eight-point win at Illinois State. And in that particular ball game, Dallas Comagies had only two points. 
went down on the floor, was injured, and the reserves uh, more or less won that ball game. There's a look at our three officials tonight, Ed Hightower and Bob Showalter of the Big Ten, Paul Castor of the Missouri Valley Conference. You remember in that game, the, the Blue Demons were behind when he went yeah, Yep, yep. Five or six points, and Rodney Strickland put on a clinic. Rodney is not here tonight. Rodney had 24 in that ball game last year. Oh, great play. Nice play. They've been coming down picking. For the guy sliding across that time, Edwards faked the pick and then rolled down the middle. T. Green again on the feed. T. with four early assists. DePaul by nine. Five points now for Kevin Edwards. This is the best DePaul's played all year so far. T. Green only averaging 2.5 assists a game. Starks missed a three-pointer off the front of the rim, and we got a foul on the rebound against Illinois State. That's the fifth Redford foul already. The Hollowfield has just checked in number 45, the 6'7 senior from Oak Park, Michigan, a 14-point average. That is the third. Oh, wait a minute. All right. Uh, foul on uh, Hollowfield. It just came in. That's his first and the team's fifth. Kevin Edwards has just gone over the 500 point mark for the Blue Demons. The Paul's hit six out of 10 so far, 60% shooting. Kevin Gold yep. got a little. Set an illegal screen. That's his first. Reckless there. Third foul against DePaul. Uh, Illinois State, one of six on the floor. The Blue Demons are six of 10. Golden trying to fight for position and uh, a little too physical. Not a very smart foul at all. Rebounding, 6-4, DePaul. That's the Blue Demons' first turnover on the offensive foul. Illinois State has turned it over three times. The only three-point attempt so far tonight. Louch made it. Precious Harris from left corner gives out foot to Blair. Blair is now a swing player in the backcourt. With Peterson with it, left side Blair. Works into the paint. Paul, oh, nice running one-hander off the glass and in. His first basket. Blair only averaging a point and a half. 14-7 to Paul by seven here with 14 minutes to go in the first half. Edwards out front, top of the circle, tried to go in low to Kevin Golden. He, he, nice out, yes, he got cut that ball away from Pemberton as the ball was battered away. Rundy tried to go inside to T. Green. This time they lost it out of bounds and a deflection in Illinois State will bring it up. The ball moving much better offensively. Even when their offense breaks down, they're making nice cuts, setting screens away to try to break somebody open. So far, I've executed very well. Sonny Roberts, number 44, 6'7", sophomore from the South Beloit, went to Rockford Boylan High School, has checked in for Illinois State. This is his second appearance. Didn't score in his first game. Harris dropped two demons in the air, but can't get the shot away. So far, Harris has not been involved much in the offense. He's a the guy they got to get going at 18-5 a game. Andy Lau shadowing him very nicely. Andy, not real quick, but real heady. Well, neither is Harris, though. That's a good matchup. Harris is a very heady player and can get him set. He can be awful tough. As you see, Kevin Golden draws another foul. Two quick fouls on Kevin, four against DePaul. I think you'll see Kevin Holland here fairly quickly. Kevin played very well in the overtime against Niagara, and I think there were two fouls. You there he comes. Yep. He had eight boards in that game, a career high for him. Four at each end, also chipped in with three points. So he comes in and... Well, Kevin Golden sets down. You know, if you're Joey Meyer and as bad as you need rebounding on both ends, you just tell a guy, hey, I need 10 rebounds a game from you. I don't care if you score two points. Give me some good D and give me some board. Peterson fires a long jumper from the right side. Nothing but that. He has five. Now, Peterson's averaging 13 points a game. He can shoot. He's got a good 8 to 10 foot range. Well, that was about a 15 footer that time. Edward down the right side. Double team. That's off Edward off foot. Yep. Yes, sir. Good reach in by Sonny Roberts, knocked it off Edwards' foot, and you very rarely see that man make a miscue in a ball handling situation. Four straight points for Illinois State as the Redbirds battle to get back in this one. They're down by five, 14-9 to the ball. There, left side, Harris open, two-pointer, got it. Just inside two-point territory, that's Jeff's first shot today. Well, that's done a lot of screens. That time, Sonny Roberts on a screen. Looked like a moving screen there. That was let go. Six unanswered points now for Illinois State. The ball lead cut to three. Bundy barrels under the basket. Short off the glass. They tie it up on the rebound. Ball will go to Illinois State on the alternate possession. Brundy wanted a foul there. Looked like uh, a lot of banging going on. Nice post-up situation, though. He got the ball down low, but couldn't make it happen. Checking in for the first time tonight, a freshman, 6'3", Brad Neiman, number 22, from Glenview, Illinois. Played it. Glenbrook South High School, a three-point average for Neiman, who will play point guard now, and that'll move Edwards to the off guard. And Joey continues to use that three-guard offense, Andy Lauchs in the game, Neiman and Edwards. Edwards, of course, a pretty good rebounder, so yeah, he can make up a little bit for a small forward situation. 
the right side center around shot by Roberts won't go. Oh, he crashed into Demon through the foul. Two wrongs don't make a right, big fella. That's foul number one on Roberts and the sixth team foul on Illinois State. The ball will be in the bonus in the next uh, foul against ISU. And we still got 12:38 to go here. And that's in the a first tough half. situation for them, Joe, because they play a lot of real aggressive old play defense. They may have to back off just a tad. Edwards left side to Lauk, looking for the even out high, but can't find him open. Dumps it in low. Holland baseline jumper. He got it. Turn around, six footer. Now sometimes when the when you get in the flow, you get to rebound and play some defense. That offense comes a little easier too. Nice move by Kevin Holland. That snapped a six-point run by Illinois State. Holland bumps in his first shot of the ball game. Oh, nice oh, deal by Edwards. They call foul on him. I think he anticipated that call. Very nice step by Kevin Edwards. Let's take a look at it. Watch him fake to one side. She fakes to the left, right, and then comes oh. back. Oh, did he pick his pocket he on sure that did. one? He I sure think did. he just anticipated that call. That's two fouls on Edwards, five against DePaul. Tough break for Kevin. T. Green checks back in for him. Joey not too happy with Ed Hightower on that call. I don't think that was Hightower. Or uh, Showalter. Baseline jumper, good. By Peterson, and he's keeping Illinois State in the ball game almost single-handedly here early. He's got seven. 16-13 to score. Neiman works the right side. Collins pick. Can't get open for the shot. Oh, they strip him. He gets it back. Almost knocked down twice. Great baseline pass. And the great to tackle. Yeah. Holland faked the Illinois State player up and over his back. And Neiman had nowhere to go, and he drew four guys. Holland clear across the floor, picks him up. The thing he's got to learn here, even though in this particular situation, I think they're in the bonus now, DePaul. I think it's the 17th foul Put that shot on up. Illinois State. He's got to get that shot up. You know, he's got to draw. When he gets a guy up in the air, he's got to go toward the basket so he can draw that two-shot foul. Right now, it's only the one-on-one, -on -one, even though the refs don't know it yet. <laughs> 11:41 still to be played in the first half. That's the seventh team foul on Illinois State. The second against Peterson. He's got seven points to pace the Redbirds here in the early going, and Kevin Holland will be at the free throw stripe. He was two for five the other night. Six-seven sophomore from Serenus, California. How about that? He may have gotten over that uh, freshman uh, early sophomore hurdle. Yep. yep. Well, what you got to do is go out and have a good game and get into the flow of things and, and try to perceive at least that your coach has uh, a lot of confidence in you where he's not going to put the hook on you just for one mistake. And you, you, then you go out and try to do positive things instead of trying not to make mistakes. Nice touch to career high the other night. And we got an official's timeout, 11.41 to go in the first half. DePaul, 18, Illinois State, 13. Sports producer Ernie Harris, you're watching the best in college basketball on WGN Television, Channel 9, Chicago. And Joe, Doc has asked me to tell Adrian to do well on an exam so she can keep her eligibility. Is she in the same class as Rod? I don't know, that's all I'm <laughs> supposed to say. There are 167 youngsters attending tonight's ball game uh, from Elgin, Illinois, home of DePaul's James Hanby, the Elgin Salvation Army Youth Basketball Group here tonight. Good job breaking the press for Illinois State. They really need to get a good shot out of Starks it. hit the back of the rim, and they tie it up loose on the floor. All in possession gives the ball to DePaul. Tough break on that shot by Starks. Hit the plans, went high in the air, and came down and out. Illinois State did a real nice job breaking DePaul's diamond and one. They really had a three-on-two situation. Did not get a shot out of it. DePaul got back very nicely. The shot went up, uh, and there was a jump ball, so DePaul will get it. Peterson out of the Illinois State lineup now. He leads both teams with seven points early. Baseline jumper, and he scores. He has hit his first shot all three appearances this year. And then the only difference one. was the first two games, they were three-pointers. And then didn't hit another one the rest That's of the right. game. Harris guarded by T. Green, left side. Hightower working the five-second count. Out front it goes to Blair. Left side starts. Well, so far, the DePaul bench 
Harris counted six points this game. Harris drills the baseline jumper, Jeff's well, second basket. Andy lax has got to get his hand up and get up closer on Harris. Harris is not going to put the ball on the floor and take it to the basket. He's not that quick. Andy off of him. If you're off of him a little bit, he'll stick it. Nice pass Indeed. inside. Brundy rolls the left handed layup out. Holland missed the foul. Tipped in by Brundy, but we got a foul call. Holland working the boards again tonight. Well, again, T. Green on a real nice feed to Brundy underneath. T. drawing a lot of traffic. Brundy just can't seem to get that ball to go in the basket down low there. And there is Kevin Holland coming across from the weak side very aggressively on the boards. Well, Kevin just knocked in a pair from the stripe a moment ago. Has four points already off the bench tonight. Doubling his year's total of four coming in. And uh, well, the ribbon, drops it in. See what happens when you start feeling it and even get those rolls. That one barely creeping over the front of the rim. And, and usually as a as a coach or another player, you can look into a guy's eyes and see if he's confident. And I think mean, you look in Kevin Holland's eyes and his confidence is growing. Coming out that time. Checking in is Gerard Coleman, a 6'7 sophomore from uh, North Chicago High School, a three-point average. He started against Purdue and then only played a couple of minutes up at Green Bay. He's in the lineup now, sorry, number 52 for Illinois State. Donovan looking for a combination. He's used three players off the bench already. 21-15 to Paul by a half dozen. Blair out front gives the start. Guarded by Neiman. Well, T. Green doing a real nice job. Overplay by Brundy makes the steal. Neiman. T. Green shadowing Jeff Harris, doing a really nice job. They're trying to get the ball to Harris, and that's really kind of messing up their offense. T. Green pulls up three-pointer. Yes! Now, T. Green oh, didn't get two. Yet. He could take one. Well, they only give him two on that. He's got four points in the ball game, but he's got four or five assists already. The ball back up by eight. Had a nine-point lead earlier. Boy, Andy Locke's being run through a lot of screens trying to guard Jeff Harris. Boom. Harris hits that baseline jumper. He's got six. Well, you got to get really up in him, make him put it on the floor and go to the basket. We thought that we both thought he was a little timid last year, but he uh, he came on second half of the season. In fact, he was second team off conference Missouri Valley and led the league in three point tries and three point field goals. Neiman had the ball knocked down there, stolen by Illinois State. Starts right side, cranks up, doesn't deliver out front to Blair. So Harris came on really strong second half of last year and has played well so far this year. Harris behind the screen doesn't take the three. Tries to go in low. Another steal by Brundy. Brundy overplays twice and comes up with two steals in a row. T. Green. Left side. Louts and three point territory is his second three pointer of the ball game. Six points on the night. See, Andy Louts, smart player. He got the ball on that fast break. He went, knew he wasn't, shouldn't be the guy to bring it up. Or went right it up to his spot. Floor, <laughs> gave it up and went right to his spot. And knew sooner or later, if he was open, he'd get back to him. Nine point Blue Demon lead. That equals their previous big edge of 14 to 5. Outfield, short off the glass. Nice rebound by T. Green. Cross court bounce pass, a little bit short. Grundy couldn't handle it. Ball knocked out of bounds. Oh, it goes to DePaul. Over the break. I, think, I thought Kevin Holland touched it last. That's a tough pass by yeah. T. Green to expect Grundy to go down low and get that. Those big guys, you know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six and above, they like the ball up in the air. Well, that was Here's a half-court, cross-court bouncer. T. Green, yeah, they slide. See, so hit that floor and slide, and the big guys can't handle it. They'd rather have the ball up in the air. Bill Hepner, number 45, freshman, checks in for DePaul, 6'8", from Crystal Lake. Right side, Neiman. Holland is on the bench now. Along with Louds, B. Green around and out. Rebound, Hepner gives off. And a foul is called on Illinois State. DePaul out rebounding and out playing, really. Uh, Illinois State at both ends so far tonight. Well, right now they're doing it where they haven't done it all year. T. Green on a tough shot, probably an ill-advised shot. But as, as much as T. hustles, you got to give him one or two of those a game. Hepner makes a nice spin move. Right around Pemberton using his quickness. He is quicker than Pemberton, by the way, although he's not real quick. And draws the foul. That's 17 fouls that were garnered in 12-25 mark. Is playing an important role here in the game for DePaul. After looking for his first point of the year, he's 0 for 2 at the stripe. That's a, that was a brick that came out of the the bounce. I mean, he threw that ball up there so fast. He's still real nervous. And Joey, get a little smile out of him. 
they are in the ball game, by the way. Ten point Blue Demon lead. Well, Joey's got to be uh, happy with the way his club's playing so Let's far see if tonight. This one's a little more relaxed. A little more relaxed on that one. He didn't get it. Still got it off the heel and the rebound patted out long to Neiman. Edwards down the right side of the lane, pull up baseline jumper, got it, no basket, foul away from the ball. Another hold on the Illinois State. Well, Brundy will go to the line. They're a very aggressive team defensively, and, and they're going to get that when they're in a the bonus. They're taught to play very aggressive overplay, bump and run kind of defense, and when you get in the bonus early, you're going to have this kind of situation. Although uh, it may end up, that's a pretty good foul, Brundy. Two for six from the line so far this year, and they took a hoop away from Kevin Edwards. Yep. Free throw missed. And Donawall will take that every time. Starts, pull up Gumper to the right side, off the front of the rim. Nice rebound by Roberts, blocked by Brundy. Foul on DePaul. Be interesting to see who that's on is. On Stanley, his first. Looked like he got all ball there. Yeah, there's the shot. Stanley behind. Whoa. Glad he didn't have a razor in his right hand or Roberts <laughs> be looking for his right hand. <laughs> Topped it off. <laughs> Stanley didn't argue much either. Uh, Holland back in. Brundy sits down. Brundy's had a couple of steals. Several key rebounds early. Harris back in the ball game after a real brief rest. He moves a lot offensively, so a guy like him is going to get tired. Roberts free throw good. It's his first try this year, his first point of the season. 27-18 to Paul by nine, 7.40 to go here in the first half. Blue Demons uh, trailed only once in the ball game at three to two. Illinois State's last victory against the ball became five years ago. Five years ago next Monday. It's been a one-sided series, 15 wins to two for Illinois State, but a lot of the games have been tough and hard fought. Timeout is called. We'll be back in a moment. DePaul leads 27-19. Andy Lox has checked back in. You see the time remaining and uh, the score. And there's Andy's stats of the year so far. How about that? 50-50 from three-point territory and all 30 of his points so I'll far this year. Him. I'd play up on him, too. <laughs> Make him dribble, put it on the floor. DePaul shooting 5.55 on 18, uh, 10, 10 of 18 overall, and Illinois State 7 of 16. That's uh, just under 44%. Long jumper by Kevin Edwards. And a short arm that one. Nice rebound by Jeff Harris. I'll make that uh, Roberts. Blair with it, working against Kevin Edwards. Edwards plays really good full court pressure defense. Harris working on Lauf. Put up the shot. Roberts. Green overplays. And they get it to Hollifield underneath. He banks it in off the glass. His first basket of the ball game. Well, when Green fell down, he needed some help that time from Hepner. So Hepner's man rolled to the hoop. And Holland was there just a little too late. The ball has a 12-10 edge early off the boards. Illinois State's turned it over five times. The ball only three turnovers tonight. Their floor game, uh, they played with much more presence tonight as a unit. Baseline jumper Edward has got it. Edwards looks like he's got a lot of confidence in his jump shot tonight. He's going to the basket, taking a dribble, going up, sticking it up. He, he looks like he's playing a little more confidence than he was early. DePaul by eight, Edwards with seven. Blair out front. Started the game at forward, now has moved out back. Swings it to Harris, left side to Roberts. Changes his pivot foot, got away with a cross-court pass. Blair out back to Harris. Takes a long three-point try. Forced that one off the front of the rim. Long rebound to Holland. Pass down the left side. Edwards moves in on Harris. Hangs. Tried to bank it. Wouldn't go. Rebound slapped off the glass, and Gerard Coleman stayed with it. Last time, DePaul went into a 2-3 two, two, zone real quickly, and I don't think Illinois State knew it. They couldn't understand it. That's why they got a bad shot out of play again. But now again in a 2-3 zone. So no adjustment by Illinois State. Harris on the right side. Back to Roberts. Roberts trying to drive against the zone. They swing it to Harris, the left corner, out front to Blair. I don't know if I want a six foot eight guy. Nice pass inside Roberts to Hollifield. Blew the layup. Stolen back by Hollifield. Out front, Harris. Got away with a walk there. Just a little one. 
Roberts inside. Oh, yeah. Fell wide open. This time he rammed it off the glass of his. Roberts looks like he's a pretty good passer. He gets that ball up over his head. He's big. He's 6'7". He sees well. Two nice feeds by Harris. One time the play up blown. That time successful. 29-23 to call by a half dozen. T. Green out on the right edge. Bad pass stolen away from Edwards by Just Blair. Good Blair. job that time. Blair gets a layup. He could have almost called offensive goaltending on Hollowfield there, and he had nothing to do with the shot, but he got his hand up on the rim. But Joey Meyer now wants a timeout as DePaul has uh, sort of reached a lull here, and their lead of nine has been whittled to four. 29-25, DePaul Z week. College basketball next week here on Channel 9. Tuesday night, our first Notre Dame telecast, Boston University, the Terriers against the Fighting Irish from South Bend at 6.30. David Rivers put on quite a clinic today at the Hoosier Dome. And then on Wednesday, Western Michigan, back here at the Horizon against the DePaul Blue Demons, will be on the air at 7.30. As you mentioned, the momentum has changed a little bit here. DePaul allowing Illinois State to get a couple of easy hoops. Must come down here and establish themselves again. Inside pass to T. Green. Nice pass to Brundy. Missed the layup. Tipped off by Golden. It rolled across the rim. And Blair comes out of there with Illinois State. Brundy must put too much spin on the ball. He has a lot of balls laying on the rim and come off. That's three already tonight. Golden's had a couple roll across the front of the iron and come off, too. Golden missed the tip down there and had a tip and missed it. The ball still fairly aggressive with their man-to-man. -man. They've gone from zone back to man-to-man. -man. It was tried for the steal. Brundy tried for the steal. Hollowfield gets it, lays it in. We got a two-point ball game. That's six points in a hurry now for Hollowfield. Again, Sonny Roberts on a nice pass. The Wonder Hollowfield shot 64% last year. He's made three layups tonight. He got by Edwards through the defense and threw a real nice pass. The ball's lead at 10, been chopped to two. T. Green down the lane, got hammered there. Alan Hollifield, his second. Uh, they're just trying to pick the guy out there. He got hit by so many people. Green trying to take over. Offensively, drives down the middle, draws a lot of traffic, and that's a pick em right there. Both clubs now shooting at dead even 50% on 11 of 22, both teams. And both teams have 13 rebounds apiece. Now Green struggling from the line at 50% this year. He shot a punch in two ball games. Misses off the heel there. That makes him 11 of 23 for the year. It's his first try tonight. You know, anytime a guy has trouble shooting free throws, I think one of the best things to do is to kind of change what you're doing. You know, you might you might back off of the free throw line, maybe a half a step, or or, or if you think the ball is going to one side, move to that other side and kind of shoot across. Anything to kind of change, just to give yourself a different look. And I haven't seen him change a thing. Ricky Jackson has just checked in for Illinois State. T. Green knocks in the second one, his first free throw. He's one for two and has five points in the game. This is you. By oh, three. I thought that was you, Joe. <laughs> Harris hauled it in, double teamed. That's a walk or a foul. Hold on Louch after Harris stumbled out of that double team trap in the backcourt. Allen Louch his second. And uh, that's seven against DePaul now. And with 3.40 to go in the half, both clubs are in the bonus. Well, DePaul hasn't made a uh, good percentage tonight, but they've been at the stripe a lot more than Illinois State. That's why they have a three-point lead. Everything else is dead well, even. 51 percent for the year. Harris now three for four on the year. That's his seventh point. Yeah, good as, he, he's going to be an 80 percent free throw shooter. He was only, like you say, two for three coming in the ball game. He doesn't drive to the basket, so he's not going to get a lot of free throws. Anytime you shoot those long jumpers, those people don't go to the line very often. Lead down to one. 30-29 to Paul. Eight points for Harris. T. Green, nice baseline pass. Bundy, went for the ball, and uh, foul is going to be called on Roberts. And that might have gone the other way that time. That's three fouls on Sonny Roberts. Well, Sonny's an aggressive player in the style of Illinois State. Now, I thought I thought he was in front of uh, Brundy that time. We'll get another look. Donawal was very unhappy with that call. Green down low. Well, any time you're in this situation, the, the offensive player is going to get the benefit of that. Golden on a pick, weak side. See, I think that, have a, that was a push on Brundy there. Well, I don't, I, it looked like to me no foul. I couldn't see Brundy's hand to oh. push. Badly missed the free throw. T. Green gets the rebound back out front. Edward, three. Three-point shot. Oh, they only gave him two. Missed it. And a foul under the basket. Foul on Green. And 
he very wisely walked away from the official with his words of abuse. Yeah. Was abusing the crowd and not the official. Or at least looked that way. Walking down to the Illinois State end, it'll be Randy Blair, who's one for two on the year. And he's pleading his case. <laughs> Paul Castro yeah, by the other. They say all, of, all basketball players that make good attorneys, you know. They're always pleading their case with the officials. They're all members of the Weiner family, huh? <laughs> Some guys are a little more diplomatic than others, you know. Randy Blair, it's his first free throw of the game. That's his fifth point. We're tied at 30. As Illinois State has battled back from a 10-point deficit to tie it here with 3.25 still to play in the first half. Well, the thing that's impressive is that they've gotten back into the ball game when DePaul has been in the bonus and they haven't. Yeah. That's impressive. Second Part time Illinois State's led by a point tonight. The other time was at 3-2. to two. T. Green dumps it out to Edwards. Louts. Back to Edwards. Drives the baseline. Jack Nice couldn't get it to crawl over the rim. Got his own rebound back. Put it up and in. No basket. Another foul. DePaul's lost about three or four baskets with foul calls tonight where they've called the a foul on Illinois State before they could get the rebound or the shot in. Well, here goes Edwards. He's been doing this very well tonight. Stops. There's a foul right there. Didn't call it. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to quit saying that. I mean, he got fouled on the shot there and did not look like he got fouled on the rebound to me. I'm not sure who they... Hit it on. I'm not sure who they could. Edwards hits the free throw. The first of the one on one were tied at 31. Kevin now two for three tonight. Gives him eight first half points. What do you call that? Makeup call? <laughs> I guess. He gets the second. Diamond in one press. Nine points for Edwards. Oh, there's. That's Jackson in the backcourt. Blair cross court to Jeff Harris. Illinois State has cut through that press very easily both times. Here it comes. Overplay. Out of bounds in front of us. Good overplay. You're right. I thought Blair was going to run right up our table there. Pulled up just in time before crashing into the sidelines. Brundy will inbound the ball with 2.52 to go. First half. DePaul with the ball in a one point lead. Edwards working on Blair, right side. T. Green fouled by Jackson. T. Encouraging the officials there a little bit. Nice call. Last foul. The previous foul, John, was on Pemberton. That's his third. Now this, you know, anytime you get two teams, Illinois State noted for aggressive overplay defense, and DePaul actually doing a little bit of it himself tonight. It's a tough game to officiate. There's so much bumping and so much overplaying that you almost got to determine how far you're going to let it go before you make the call. Starks is checked back in, replacing Ricky Jackson, 6'4", sophomore from Mount Morris, Michigan. Played at Beecher High School in Flint. He was a high school teammate of Roy Marvel of Iowa. He sets down. He was uh, suspended for a while early in the year. D. Green badly missed the free throw. Batted out long where Green saved it. Nice move. Well, he missed Edwards right there. Edwards wide open. As T got the ball, and T did not see him. T Green playing a very good team game early in the game, but I think as ISU has come back, he's kind of taken the responsibility to do it himself here again. He played a little out of control there after missing well, the free throw. has the last few times down the floor, and he's got to get away from that. going to have his 30 points again. Harris had the ball stripped away. Edwards down the lane. Nice baseline feed. T. Green lays it in the left side. DePaul leads by three. Now 34-31. Seven points for Green. Clinic, clinical two-on-one fast break. Beautiful feed from yep. Kevin Edwards. Blair out front. Left side. Harris. Oh. Golden rolled away from him too quickly that time yeah, and left an open pass to the basket. Never leave a shooter. Locks got over there just in time, and they cut him off at the baseline. 150 to go on the half. Illinois State down by three. The Redbirds working the ball around the perimeter. Left side, Harris missed the three from the right. Rebound the eight down by Bundy. DePaul with the lead, bringing it up now. Left side pass, Edwards. T. Green, Jack Knight, put it up short, fired his own miss. Uh, Bundy had it knocked loose. It goes to Edwards. Oh, what a cross court bounce pass to Louse for the basket. And his first two point shot of the year. Edwards nicely penetrated, drew the defense. 
knew that Andy was there, copped and ready to fire and got it to him. Kevin Edwards playing a real fine ball game. It's a flying backdoor bounce pass through two defenders. Harris Bumble gets it back on the right side. Double teamed, almost tied up by Lauf and Green. Finally got it out to start. Joey nice wanted job. a five-second call. Nice job by Harris. He stepped through the double team. That's what you have to do. Oh, Kevin Golden just gave Harris his back. A minute to go. First half to fall by five. Harris, right side, guarded by Lauf. Drives the baseline on Andy, bumps into Golden, double team, has to give it out to Starks on the right side, rolled out. Golden tipped the ball along, and Starks picks it off for Illinois State. They'll reload. They can use up almost all the clock. They can use up all but two seconds of the first half if they choose to. What they tell you to do to shooters, uh, Harris came through the middle, cut through. Kevin Golden saw him there by himself, just gave him a little left tap as he went through the middle. Got to get those shooters out of stride. Working the clock down. They've got all but two seconds in the first half to get this shot off. The ball leading by five. Blair out front being pressured by Paris Green. Five seconds. Yep. A turnover. Gives the ball back to DePaul with 16 seconds to go. The Blue Demons should get the last shot. Nice little momentum builder for the Demons. Right before halftime, they can get a hoop here. Checking yep. back in, Kevin Holland replacing Kevin Golden as Joey goes with a little more scoring punch underneath here in the final 16 seconds. Well, what you want to do here is hold it until you can get a rebound shot, but they can't get a shot off. Design, your, design yourself a play. Get some movement. Edwards one-on-one -on, -one on Blair. Cross court underneath. Box has it stripped away. Stolen back by Illinois State. Four seconds to go on the back court. They're going to get out of bounds. They sure will. They lose it out of bounds under the DePaul uh, basket with two seconds to go. They made a mistake in going much, much too early with time running down the clock. They went at the 12-second mark. That would have given Illinois State ample opportunity to score, but they lose the ball out of bounds, and DePaul will get another shot. Kevin Edwards will trigger in. They screen. He gives it to T. Green. Got the baseline jumper in and out. Tipped up and out by Prundy. At the horn. That's the end of the first half of play here at the Rosemont Horizon. And then they battle back to a five-point edge here at halftime. DePaul 36, the Redbirds of Illinois State 31. Welcome back to the Horizon in Rosemont, Illinois, where the Demons, with a surge at the end of the first half, lead the Redbirds of Illinois State 36 to 31. And it was a lot of good fundamental basketball play in the first half. The pick and roll, one of the oldest plays in the game, was one of our highlights. You see T. Green here very nicely using a pick from Brundy. He draws a lot of traffic, as guys averaging 30 points a game will do, and he finds Brundy open up right underneath the basket. All the highlights were not for the Demons, though. Illinois State's Blair slithers into the middle with a little doopsie doo up off the glass. Nice move as the Illinois State Redbirds ran back, came back from a 10-point deficit. Harris, averaging 18-5 a game, shows his patented jump shot. But also, T. Green can shoot jumpers. He's averaging almost 30 points a game, shooting 53% from the field. And Andy Laux in his patent three-point jump shot play. Those were the highlights in the first half, and Joe will be back with stats. I'll have a special guest after this. today's music q101 half time here at the rosemont horizon DePaul leading illinois state by 5 36 31 and as you might well imagine this has been a big big basketball day from coast to coast starting with some of the other scores in the big 10 uh, the michigan wolverines one of the best young ball clubs in the country a 30-point win over central michigan 
How about this one? Indiana and Kentucky before 43,600 in the second game of that doubleheader at the Hoosier Dome. They went overtime. They were tied at 71 at the end of regulation. Kentucky wins it 82 to 76 despite Callaway's 26 points for the Hoosiers. Wisconsin beat Butler 92 to 80. And in other ball games, Alabama, a nine-point win over USC. How about 10 over LaSalle in the Battle of Philadelphia School? Quakers win by five. West Virginia over Bob Wade's Maryland Ball Club, 75-49. In the first game of that doubleheader at the Hoosier Dome, David Rivers put on quite a display. 32 points to lead the Irish to a 15-point win over Louisville, despite Ellison's 23. And the Irish will be in here a week from the day to battle the Blue Demons at the horizon. How about Gene Sullivan's club being ripped by 50 at Norman, Oklahoma, the Sooners over Loyola, 123 to 73. And in the backyard scrap down in Georgia, the Tech Bulldogs are leading, uh, I should say the Tech uh, Texters leading the Georgia Bulldogs, 67-65. That ball game yet uh, to be finished. At West Lafayette, the Purdue Boilermakers won a tough, uh, couple of tough games on the road, leading Oregon rather easily tonight. 78-44, the Big Ten over the Pac-10 there. Michigan State trailing by a deuce in the uh, second half to George Washington and East Lansing. And the uh, unbeaten Northwestern Wildcats having a tough time with the Duke Blue Demons tonight. The Blue Devils of Duke leading by 17. So those are some of the scores of other major college basketball games around our country. We've got a good one going here with DePaul leading Illinois State by five. John Mengelt will have a special halftime guest coming up in just a moment. And with me here, yes, is Ron Wellman, the new athletic director at Illinois State University, baseball coach at Northwestern for five years. And Ron, you went into a real interesting situation. You got an arena, a new arena that's half up. It's half up right now. Hopefully it'll be all up by uh, next season. We anticipate the arena being completed by next September. It's a beautiful facility. We're really excited about it. It's uh, gonna hold 10,500 people. And the community, the school, everyone is just thrilled with it. So uh, next year we'll be very happy at this time. Anything a little unique about it that's different than other arenas? Well, the roof is very unique. There's only uh, one of them in the United States. It's going to be a fabric roof. Uh, they have two of them in Seoul, South Korea, for the Olympics. We have the only other one. The, the, the problem with it is we're trying to put it up during the winter months. Yeah. So if we have a good uh, winter weather-wise, we'll get the roof up. As any S director would want to know, is it paid for yet, or do you need more money? <laughs> we always need more money. If it's not for the roof, it's for something else. So, uh, yeah, we're always looking for more money, and we're working hard in that area. Okay, best of luck to you. Thanks for coming on with us tonight. we got a good ball game here. And Joe and I will be back with some stats in the second half action right after this. Finding the right gift is easy. With these ideas inside the newest holiday circular from True Value Hardware Store. This GE stereo clock radio is just $32.88. And this Casio handheld printing calculator is only $19.99. Give this AT&T answering system with beeperless remote to receive and change messages. Just $109.99 at participating True Value hardware stores. And tell them Pat Summerall sent you. When you're trying to make a name for yourself, you sure have a lot of proving to do. You got to prove you can perform. You got to prove you're quick. You got to prove you're maneuverable. And if you work hard enough and long enough, pretty soon people will notice. So what do you do when all this happens? Well, you don't slow down, that's for sure. Neil Anderson for the 1988 Honda Accord, the new crowd pleaser in town. 36-31 the score here at halftime. I might also mention that the DePaul Blue Demon girls basketball team, one of the top uh, 25 in the country, they're just out of the 20, the top 20, 
led by All-American candidate junior Diana Vines, uh, had 24 points, 12 rebounds this afternoon, and they won big, beating uh, Toledo 86 to 50. Uh, they played very well, and they're going to play eighth-ranked Virginia at 7:30 at Alumni Hall on the 9th of January. That's a little ways away yet, but uh, they've got a good basketball program for the gals at DePaul as well. They do. They play very well. It's always interesting to catch a ball game or two, like I do every year. Let's check the individual scoring. It's been balanced on both sides of the ledger for the DePaul Blue Demons. Kevin Edwards leads the way with nine on three baskets and three out of four at the line. Eight points for Andy Locks. He has a couple more threes tonight. And, and a two. Uh, yeah, and a two. His first one this year. And uh, T. Green has seven. Those are the three leaders for DePaul. For Illinois State, eight points for Jeff Harris. And he's had to work hard for those eight points. Uh, they've done a pretty good job defensively on him. Cliff Peterson got seven early and then got into foul trouble and had to sit down. And six points apiece for Tony Hollifield, who was benched at the start, and also Randy Blair. A look at the team stats. You see that DePaul shooting uh, just about even with Illinois State. Two more field goals, six more shots. DePaul shooting 45% from the floor, while the Redbirds at 46%. And there's Lox, two out of two from three-point territory. The Redbirds, uh, 0 for 2 from the three-point strike. Well, the two differences in this ball game, one are, Joe, the, the, the rebounding. The rebounding was very equal at one time. Now the Blue Demons lead 21 to 15. And in the free throws, the Demons continue to struggle from the line. And the Redbirds, 9 out of 9. If it wasn't for that, if the Demons were winning a free throws, they'd have a pretty substantial lead here at halftime. They also have only six turnovers to 9 for Illinois State. But uh, even with the free throw shooting uh, problems, 8 of 15 for DePaul, uh, their, their overall floor play offensively is, has uh, been much improved tonight. They, they really uh, look like they know what they want to do. They're not near as tentative as they were the first couple of ball yeah. games. Yeah, and they're playing very aggressive, too, defensively and on the boards. They're crashing the boards very hardly. They got some offensive rebounds, put the ball back up. And, and if they can put two back-to-back -back halves together, they'll be all right. 12 of their 21 boards on the offensive end, John. That's a most unusual figure. And Grundy and Green got five boards apiece in the first half. Illinois State with it to start the second half. That's Roberts out front. Illinois State with only four points off their bench in the first half, only eight all season before this game. So they're not getting much production from their bench. From the left corner, nice jumper by Peterson. He's got nine. He's, like you said before, he's really held them in this ball game. When they made their run, he scored three out of the five baskets when they got him back from the 10 point deficit, and he pumps the first one in here in the second half to get a little momentum. Kevin Golden open for 15. In and out and back in. He got the oh. first basket of the night as it rattled around all sides before it dropped in. Very nice shot taken in his rhythm. He came up off the screen, had an open 15 footer, and stuck it. The ball with that five point lead, 38 33, down the lane. Blair, nice scooping drive, got it. Well, there's a real prime example of how a good offense will allow a point guard to go all the way to the basket. The offense was moving very well, and he just put it all the way as Brunman scores from underneath. First one he's hit under there, Joe. Nice speed to Stanley, and he's got six. The ball with that five-point lead. Double-team Harris. Finally dumps it out back to Blair, left side. Peterson again fires from out front, hits the heel of the rim, follows his own miss, ball flat loose. It's going to be a reach on Edwards. Oh, they call it. Double dribble. They missed the Peterson. call, right? Yeah. Edwards really uh, knocked that ball away from behind. I thought he was going to get called for the reach. Yeah, but obviously they, they missed that call. Edwards did knock the ball away, and when the whistle blew, I, I thought it was going to be a foul, but it wasn't. I think, you know, I... In, in my opinion, I think Ed Hightower saw the play. I, I don't know why referees get all upset when somebody overrules them. I, I would think that somebody would uh, Beautiful kill with yeah, hands with an underhand left-handed scoop shot on the drive by Edwards. You know, I, getting back to what I was saying, I, I don't think I would be embarrassed by the referee. I'd, I'd want the right call made. Yeah. Seven-point lead. DePaul, early in the second half. Blair to Harris. Illinois State trying oh, to get a nice deal by Edwards. He beats both of them down. There could be a deliberate foul. That might be a two-shot foul plus possession. No, Let's see if Hightower so, no. calls it. I talked to Ed Hightower before the game about that particular call because obviously the intentional foul is an, a new rule where you get two shots in a ball. Look at Kevin Edwards' quickness. He now, that wasn't an intentional both foul. both guys down the floor <laughs> with the ball dribbling the basketball. Notice how he pushed it way, way out in front of him and really kind of chase the ball instead of dribble it. That's what good players will do. Edwards hits the free throw. He is now four out of five tonight. That's what he should 
Average just about on the year. That gives him 12 points. I think the difference, an intentional foul there might have been if, you know, you grab the guy from behind around the waist or kind of tackling. They went for the ball, tried to slap it. Was going to make sure he didn't get an easy two, though. 13 for Edwards. Five out of six at the stripe. DePaul by nine again now. The biggest lead of the night was a 10-point spread at 27-17, but then Illinois State battled back to take a brief one-point in. Roberts. Brundy on the block. Yep, from behind, and Brundy got the rebound. Outlet pass Edwards. Three on three. Takes it to the right side. Out front. Louse open. Passes up the shot. Gives to Brundy. In the paint. Golden triple T. But dives loose on the floor. Knocks it out. Mid court. They tie it up. He DePaul's ball. On the alternate ball. possession rule. Louse tying it up with Hollifield at midcourt, and DePaul will inbound the ball, leading by nine. Real nice hustle by Hollifield there. It looked like Andy Louse could have picked that ball up. Didn't get to it quick enough, and Hollifield on the dive makes DePaul use up their arrow. That yeah. way, next time, Illinois State will get the ball and jump ball. Hollifield was set on the bench at the start of the ball game tonight for a lackluster performance up at uh, University of Wisconsin, Green Bay. Oh, great pass. T. Green to Brundy for the slam. Jam and DePaul now leads by 11. Well, T. Green's been doing that all night, maneuvering into the middle. He had five assists drawing, in the first half. Drawing a lot of traffic, a lot of people. Four guys he draws. Brundy open for the dunk. Brundy with eight now. And Green with at least six assists. Although his career high, believe it or not, for a single game is one more than Rod Strickland. Strickland's high is 13. He got 14 in a ball game last year. Randy Lauk's just doing a great job shadowing Jeff Harris defensively, making sure he has to work very, very hard to get his shots. Ten seconds left on the 45-second possession clock. Illinois State, oh, almost turned it over. He did turn it over. Double dribble on Blair. Andy Laux, one-on-one -on, -one on Jeff Harris, getting banged and bruised through two picks, another pick, but right there, if Harris had gone up, Andy Laux, good hustle defensively. Laux off to a great start in his senior year. Give and go, Golden blows the layup, followed by Brunley and DePaul, eight by 13. And Golden got so excited there, he didn't fall up off the glass. <laughs> he was so wide open, he almost the board. In a film session, he'll call out a pass, though. That's yeah. how he's passing the ball. He'll want it a set. Timeout called by Bob Donowall of Illinois State before this one gets completely out of hand. But DePaul on a roll, leading by 13. DePaul leading by 13, and here's the feed. Edwards, top of the key. Look how wide open Kevin Golden was. Well, when, they, when they watch this in the tape session, they'll see that same thing Kevin said. That's a pass. Yeah, right. I was drawing a lot of traffic, so I passed it to Stanley. That's the only shot DePaul has missed. Blue Demons, four out of five. Illinois State 204. You know, right now, Joe, they're doing it on a defensive end. They're very aggressive. They're they're double teaming. They're overplaying. Kevin Edwards has caused three turnovers here early in the second half already. The stats they gave us are incorrect. The ball has uh, already made five field goals, so they're five out of six, and they have an eight-point run here, leading by 13, their biggest spread of the night. Double team in low. T. Green call for the reach. His second foul, and that's the first foul on DePaul in the second half. Nine times out of ten, when you come around and you reach like that, even if you get all ball, the official is going to give the benefit of the doubt to the offensive player. His perception is you just couldn't do it that clean without bumping the guy. The bounce pass to Blair. He swings it to Roberts. Roberts had a lot of playing time tonight. That's just a couple of free throws for his effort. Harris got away with a walk while he was directing traffic there. Blair out front. Nice steal by Lau. Edwards. They're going to count the basket, give him the continuation. There was a good call. There was a, that's a call you've been asking for all year. Yeah, I think Ed Hightower there may have said, hey, look, this might have been an intentional foul. Yep. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to give him the basket here and not cause the intentional foul. There you see it right there's a bump, another bump. And let's give him the hoop and get away from that intentional foul. Nice, savvy call by Ed Hightower. Yep. Kevin Edwards gets the slam, now a chance for a three-point play, I mean, and he's got You know, he's either got to call an intentional foul if he doesn't call that, yeah. or call nothing. I mean, call foul, and all the Paul does, he gets the ball to bounce. Off of Hollyfield's hand as the pressure tends to wear on Illinois State. A 16-point DePaul lead, and they're blowing this one open here in the early stages of the second half. 51-35. Six turnovers already. Locks on the left wing. DePaul very impressive tonight. Kevin Golden, 
Draws iron from 10 feet away, baseline left. Now the ball with still with nobody, no big man that has established himself as a post-up player here tonight. That's really something they need very badly. Roberts muscles in, hits the eight-footer. Sonny Roberts, first basket of the year. 51-37, Blue Demons by 14. Nice behind the back transition dribble by uh, Edwards. T. Green, baseline. Tries to force it underneath. Yeah. Now he, he went up that time thinking pass first, shoot second. You can't do that. You go up, you got to look at the basket. If the thing develops, then you pass. Spoken by a true shooter. <laughs> Hollifield rolls it out, and it's tipped by Brundy to Edwards. Here comes the ball on the break. The three blue, uh, three red perter back. But Edwards hits the pull-up jumper and rims it out to the right. Well, Edwards likes that little bank shot, but that's not a very good shot. One on force. three. <laughs> Not when you're up 14 points. Pull it out. Make sure you get a good shot. Use if you got numbers, throw it up there. Uh, use some clock, too. That's what I'm saying. If you got numbers, go on ahead and put it up. You want to keep the momentum. Three-point try from the left corner. Good. Home run. First one of the ball game by Jeff Harris, who had hit 7 of 11 on the year coming in. I think it's very important that you establish yourself here. Okay, they're going to call a timeout. Joey knows that. He's upset, and he wants to make sure he gets a good shot. Well, the 16-point lead suddenly has been whittled to 11. It's 51-40, DePaul over Illinois State. 51 to 40 to score. DePaul leading with 14.24 to go. So far here in the second half, Blue Demon 6 of 9. That's two out of every three they put up from the floor, 67%. The Redbirds of Illinois State, 4 of 7, 57%. Blue Demons are 3 out of 3 from the stripe here in the second half. Turnovers, 5 for Illinois State, 1 for DePaul. That's the big stat. The pressure defense forced the mistake. Now, Joey Meyer used an important time out there that he may need later on in the game, but he thought this was a situation where his Blue Demons have gotten a little wild and held her skelter and wanted to pull the reins back a little bit. A couple bad shots and a couple of lapses on defense took the game from a 16-point lead to 11-point lead. T. Green out front. Working against Cliff Peterson. Takes a baseline left. Kevin Holland back in there. No careless pass by Kevin Holland to T. Green. They got away with it. Locks out front. Right side Edwards. Kevin was 16. Nice cross pass inside. Brundy missed the left. Tipped by Holland in. He's got seven points now. That's a career high for him. Well, that hoop's got a cover on it for Brundy. He can't get any of these bunnies to fall. Kevin Edwards, a nice lead pass. See, when you throw that pass like that, it tells your offensive player that there's nobody on that side. Therefore, you're confident when you go up that Brundy still blew it. Jeff Harris trying to maneuver over Lauchs. Can't get rid of the shot. Dumps it out back to Peterson. 13 point to Paul Lee Harris. Wheels into the paint. Ball knocked loose. No foul. Edwards. That's got to be a grab. I got to call two shot foul. Boy, down on one knee. Peterson just reached up, tried to tackle. Well, that was a smart call. I mean, smart move by Peterson. I mean, he's got, look at this. It's a three on nothing, man. It's gone to the races here. And he grabs him. I got to give him a two shot foul. I got, that's where I got to call the intentional foul. Well, they didn't call it. The I mean, I, I can't blame court. Peterson. I mean, that's. You know, that's done in the NBA all the time. It's a smart foul. You just took a hoop away, and what do you do? You take the ball out of bounds. Third foul on Peterson, third looks, against the Illinois State. Looks like to me Ed Hightower does not want to call that intentional foul. That he wants to use that only when he definitely thinks that it was intentional. But I don't know what he thought there. Neiman back in the ball. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, bounces out. Won't fall for Edwards. Outlet pass. Edwards steals it back. And Peterson falls hard on his left arm and draws the foul. His fourth. Donwall can't believe it. The out official, Paul Castor from the Missouri Valley, made the call. Peterson fell very hard, very awkwardly, but uh, apparently he's all right. Well, Kevin Edwards has such quick hands, long arms. He really is so quick. And he anticipates the lanes well, too. He anticipates what players are going to do well. He anticipates the passing lane. You know, I, I just think that uh, he's going to make a real solid throw somewhere. Well, he's up with four or five steals already tonight. Neiman lifts off the back of the rim. Tipped off the glass by Brundy. He got a while on the ball that time. Brundy with 12. Eight here in the second half, and he's had a couple more roll off. Lead back to 15. 12 40 to go. 55 40 to fall. Harris out back to Blair. Illinois State faced with their first 0 and 3 start. Look at that. Here. Here. Another steal by Edwards on the breakaway. <laughs> Showtime for Kevin Edwards. Well, his showtime, though, is his defense in the passing lane. Got his hands on the ball. He he can play some defense. Let me tell you. 
Another timeout for Donawall and a standing ovation for the young Blue Demons here. Another steal by Edwards. Here's the breakaway and the spinning slam jam to give DePaul a 17-point lead at 57 to 40. That's a new title, I think. I think they Ernie, gave him congratulations. a I heard Ernie's kid's pretty good baseball player, too, Craig Harris. I heard that uh, Illinois State's taking a look at him. There must be a lot of guys. I've read a lot of things about him. Good to take after Ar his Ar pop. Arnie, Arnie, did you know that Arnie went to Drake on a basketball scholarship? Arnie did? Arnie, Arnie, Arnie Harris, our own Arnie Harris. No, wait a minute. No, you're, I'm serious. You're going to be pulling my leg. Hey. The dribbler? <laughs> <laughs> The baby bouncer, huh? I'll tell you one thing, he can cut a game better than anybody I've seen. Good pick and roll again. And Brunny can't buy it. Oh, boy, he's missed some easy shots. They keep it alive. Holland with a rebound. Now Edwards backs it out. They'll set it up. One four set. They get down screens, and Brunny's going to get called for a pick. Illegal screen. This second. One of the things you can't do, that illegal screen, see, once the offensive player comes through the screen, you can't move. Rundy moved after Neiman came through the screen and caught the defensive player. That's a no-no. Rundy sits down with 12. Neiman back in. Neiman and Lauk are out front. Edwards playing the small forward. Hepner's back in there along with Holland. Boy, this is a young ball club on the floor now for DePaul. Got two seniors, a sophomore, two freshmen. Harris on the right wing. DePaul leading 57 to 40, 11 20 to go in the ball game. Andy Louse continues to do a nice job oh, on Jeff has. Harris. He really has. And that's tough, too, when you're shadowing a guy and running around. And Harris moves pretty well without the basketball, though he's not very quick. Roberts gives it to Harris in the right corner. Roberts pull up jumper over uh, the youngster Neiman, not there, and another big board for Kevin Holland. And boy, he's got that, he's got that confidence going now. He is an entirely different looking player than he was a game ago. He's got some pretty big shoulders too. I would get, he's got some pretty sharp elbows. <laughs> nice another nice speed inside. Hepner missed the layup, but drew the foul. And on Hollowfield, that's four, and he has been a non-factor tonight. He got three layups in a span of about six minutes early in the. Uh, second 10-minute segment, and that's been it for Holland. You see Kevin Edwards stretch there now. He knows that the defensive pressure is on the right shoulder, okay, of Hefner. So he knows that there's nobody left, but Hefner doesn't know that, see, because he's got his back to him. So the lead pass will go to the left hand to show Hefner that that's to where he should go to the basket. Very nice move by the senior Kevin Edwards. DePaul shooting 60%, 9 of 15 in the second half. Illinois State just four of seven. They haven't put up many shots. They've turned it over. Hefner hits the free throw. That's his second point in his DePaul career. Second free throw tonight. He is one for two. Blue Demons are four out of four at the stripe here in the second half. Eight turnovers for Illinois State. Just one for DePaul. Hefner hits a pair. I think Andy Lauk's blocked shot in the first half with the omen. <laughs> <laughs> you said so, but that's another turnover. A ninth turnover for Illinois State. Donawald doesn't even buy, Well, now he gets up off the fence. Yeah, just I'm sure he's upset at Hollyfield. Hollyfield had a layup there. The Redbirds broke the press very nicely, and he just didn't look it into his hands. Lack of concentration. I think they thought at Bloomington Normal this was going to be a pretty good ball club, but they're certainly not playing that way tonight. A nice block over the top. Roberts blocked that shot attempt by T. Green as he was a uh, midget amongst the uh, Redwoods there. Well, they're minus Taphorn and... Well, Taphorn is a playmaker, no question about it. Skerich uh, didn't play a whole lot last year, but Taphorn is a good, solid player. Harris behind the screen, rolled it in and out. Hefner battles for the rebound, knocked out of bounds. It goes to Illinois State. Well, Hefner went after that rebound with his arms, okay? And to be a real good rebounder, you can't do that. You've got to go up strong with the shoulders, bump, grind, and then go up for the basketball. He wanted to reach that ball. You reach that ball, they're going to bang it away from you every time. Is that, a, is that a high school habit when you got a big youngster who well, can do a lot of yeah, things? Yeah, he's still. dominated, right? He's been, uh, you know, six, uh, six, eight, six, nine, and he's playing against six, three, and six, two guys. Uh, he doesn't have to go up strong for the ball. He goes up and reaches it and gets it. And sometimes they don't learn to get real good position either. That's something he'll have to learn when the coaches at the ball have to teach him. During the final ten minutes of play, Harris three-point shot from the left side. It's good. Now, that, that's going to make Andy Lauch mad because he's done a great job shadowing Harris man-to-man. -man. Then they go into his zone. A guy like Harris got to lick his chops. 
Harris now with a pair of threes in the second half, and that gives him a total of 14. Underneath, Holland with a backdoor left. Nice pass to Manny Laux again. The screen away, Holland came across, and he led him to his left hand to the basket, and a nice easy bunny for Holland. Illinois State had only nine points in the first 10 minutes of the second half. It's 61-43 to Paul. A career night for young Kevin Holland. Inside move, nice shot up and in by Peterson, who's got 11 now. 16-point Blue Demon edge. Demon out front, works it to the left side. 61-45 to Paul, 8.55 to go. Lops on the left wing, out back to T. Green. Green works by Hepner's baseline pick and knocks in a six-footer. That's his first two points of the second half, gives him nine on the night. He was averaging 29 through the first two games. T. Green goes awful hard to his right, plants and goes up very well. I think if I was playing defensively, I'd try to force him left. He's awful tough going right as he's little soft shoe there by Harris. That's the tenth Redbird turnover of the second half. And they're 19th of the ball game. Donawall has just got to be totally frustrated right now. Well, 12,428, our largest crowd of the year. This is the third game at the Horizon. A lot of them, I'm sure, came up from Central Illinois for this one. Hefner, high post right. Nice pass inside T. Green. Fake left, went right. They grabbed him right in the paint. Well, T's got to cool down there. I mean, Harris, intelligent player, knew he was beat. Just gave him a little hack. And depending upon what team foul it is, it is the seventh. He'll go to the line, but he was going to make T earn him from the line, knowing that Green's a, not a very good free throw shooter. 8-17 to go in the game. T is one for three tonight. 12 for 25 on the year. And this is the third game of the season. When you're up there that often, you better start making a better percentage. And he puts himself in double digits with his second free throw. It gives him his 10th point. He's That's got a head ten. game. It's a head <laughs> game. You know, I mean, it, you get up there and you, you start thinking about it, and that's the worst thing you can do. And then you uh, lose all your good mechanics. Ah, he's got good form there. He knocks them both in. He's, he is a great young man, though. He's Diamond in one press. Illinois State has seemed to be shaken by this press in the second half. 20-point lead for DePaul. Yeah. 65-45. Quite frankly, I didn't think there'd be a blowout on either side tonight. I thought this was going to be a tough ball game, probably a four or five point down to the wire decision. Turn around jumper. Nice touch by Peterson. Same shot, same yeah. place. He could put it in. You know, a good defensive player now will notice that he took the ball in that particular position. One, he'll try to force him out of that position. But if he does get it there, you'll try to make him turn left, turn the other way instead of back right. Green works off Edwards' pitch. And gives up to Kevin at the point. Left side. Nice short half pass to Neiman. Scores from the left corner. They give him two. Not the greatest pass. And Neiman did a nice good job of picking that ball up and taking a shot. You know, a pure shooter likes to get the ball right so he can go up in motion. Oh, good hustle by the extra Hefner who blocked the pass and then dove on the floor trying to get it back. Didn't even the Golden Glove Award on that short hop grab out of the corner a moment ago. Neiman now with four. That's his career high. Harris from three. Off to the left. T. Green had it bounce off the top of his head. Lost it. Double teamed. Peterson finally got it back. They swing it around. To Roberts inside Peterson. Nice Again, turn Peterson two. turns to his right. He's not in the same position, but every time turns to his right, you got to you got to shade that left shoulder if he's going to do that and make him go back to his left hand to shoot. He has 15. Harris 14 to lead Illinois State here to fall by 18, 67, 49. Edwards hands it to Neiman. Oh, he wanted to go for the three there. Face it's on five and a slam jam by Kevin Edwards. Edwards now with 20. And he'll have a chance for a three-point play. Did he accelerate to the hoop? One bounce. Nice speed. One bounce. Boom. Oh. Take that. This kid's, a, this, this kid's a super athlete, let me tell you. He got off to a little shaky start early in the year because he was out of position. Now he's adjusted a little bit to it. But I think there was so much of a pressure on him to handle the ball without Rodney Strickland early in the year that he in turn probably overhandled it and got himself into trouble and out of sync of his game. He has played just a super game here tonight. 
Free throw dancing on the rim and it falls in. He's seven out of eight from there. It gives him 21, a game high. Peterson fouled out on that play, by the way. He had knocked in three in a row down on the offensive end for Illinois State. And he leads the Redbirds with 15, but he's out of there. Baseline jumper is good. Oh, that, oh, Peterson's still in there. Looked up on the board, they had five fouls on him. Fooled you, didn't it? Yeah, I guess so. I can't believe that scoreboard now. <laughs> Get that new fancy scoreboard here at the Rosemont. Uh, horizon here in Rosemont, and uh, it'll mislead you a little bit. You know the Rosemont Joe had more people attending events last year than anybody in the country? He's got to take that. your hats off to Rick Bajorklin, who runs the place here. He was brought in a couple of years ago. He's done a great job. Neven tried a three-pointer, missed it, and fall again to the... Well, he's going to change teams. See, he's going to yeah. go sit on DePaul's bench. <laughs> he wants to be with a winner right in the lap of Coach Jim Molinaire. <laughs> Just, hey, you're sweaty, man. <laughs> Jim, one of those Madison Avenue type dressers. See, he didn't like to get that sweat on him. <laughs> attorney. You know how those attorneys are. You know, they like to look real sharp. There he is. <laughs> Jim Molinaire. He's been an assistant here at DePaul for 10 years. That's South Street tie. You know, he's ready. That guy's got to get a head coaching job. Well, I was just going to say, he's been rumored uh, the last couple of years at several different... Uh, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure Joey doesn't want to stand in his way, but we'd love to have him stay. But, uh, you know, you get a good opportunity, you got to take it. Hefner missed a 10-footer off the front, still looking for his first field goal. He's just a super person, too, as well as being a great coach. 70 51 to Paul leading. 5-14 to go. Hefner, good defense, knocks it away. Now Edwards going to slow it down, set it up. Kevin with 21, the lead both club here tonight. Fox. And he's done a yeoman job defensively. Nice inside pass. Holland, turn around off the glass. And a little smile there from Kevin Holland. He's, he's got really, 11. He's happy with his play. And, he, and each game, each time he does something good, the confidence grows. And there's a guy who can get the ball off the board for you. I was just going to say, he may be the post-up player they're looking for. He has 11 points tonight, his career high prior to tonight was five against Furman. Nice baseline drive in and out won't go as Peterson couldn't get the roll left hand at that time and Lauf saved it inbound to Neiman. DePaul with a 21 point lead and the ball. Neiman draws the foul on Harris. Shot falls in but uh, it's allowed. We've been watching NBA trying to get one of those continuation plays. DePaul in a one four set they put uh, Edwards out front and Laux and Neiman down low. And the big men, the two big men, Hefner and Holland, go down set picks for them. They come off the picks for the jumpers. If there's no jumper, they post up down low. That's a nice offense. I like that. Foul a moment ago when I thought it was on Peterson was on 52. Gerard Coleman, his third. Peterson playing with four. The 72 to 51. And the young man who shot better than 94% as a senior last year. In high school, we'll shoot a pair here. We'll get the one in bonus. The other night, his first uh, try at the free throw line against uh, Niagara. Hefner, or rather, Freeman missed a couple of free throws. So he's 0 for 2 in his collegiate career. He made 76 in a row last year and shot 94.6% of the year. That is some kind of free throw shooting. I don't care what gym you're shooting in. You know, he's missed a couple in important situations this year. He's got a confidence there. And he knocks in the first one. Well, yeah. I mean, the game was on the line. Yeah, that's a whole different free throw, <laughs> I'm telling and, you. And you're a freshman. You've not shot one before. That's well, and then he missed one early in the game that, that probably could have iced it. So, you know, and it, I'll tell you what. It's, you know, these people sit here in the stands and holler. He may never miss another one. A whole lot of differences <laughs> with elbow locks up real easy. Believe me. He'll probably miss first couple on the road, and that'll be it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'll make the rest of them. 74-51, by 23. Sometimes a little easier on the road, you know, unless it's in a tight situation where you got people waving everything at you. I mean, you're not at home, so people don't expect so much. Henderson to Harris, pull up jumper from the left side, no basket, foul oh, before the shot. Again, Andy Laux making Harris work for everything he gets. And he's averaging 18.5 a game. And 7 of 11 from three-point territory. He's hit two tonight, but he's put up six or seven. Baseline left, Harris will inbound the ball. Out back it goes. Foul on Andy Lox is third. Only the third team foul on DePaul. We've got less than four minutes to play. Now here in his zone defense, 
you know, you've got to keep an eye on a guy like Harris. You almost got to shade him if you're a defensive player. Make sure you know where he's at because he's out there just, he can't wait until he's, nobody's looking and gets his feet lined up and fires away. Just call Andy for another foul or each his fourth, fourth team foul. Well, you almost, uh, talking about shading, you almost have to play a semi box and one when you got a shooter like yeah, that. You don't He's going to run from coast to coast to get get open. Yeah, you don't need to box the guy, but you better know where he's at all the yeah. time. We have a timeout. 346 to go here at the Rosemont Horizon. More than 12,000 on hand. DePaul leading 74 to 51. Second half stats, DePaul, 14 of 25, 56%. And get this, the Blue Demons have made 10 straight free throws in the second half. They've out-rebounded Illinois State, 10-8. Redbirds have shot pretty well, really. Two out of three from three-point range and nine of 16, 56-plus from the floor. But they've turned it over 11 times to just two for DePaul. And that's been a big difference. That's why DePaul has put up nine more shots. They had six quick turnovers early in the half, and it's when DePaul made their blitz and kind of put themselves out of reach. Demons by 23. Roberts, I think, played virtually the entire second half. Lauch tipped that pass out of bounds into the Illinois State bench. And Hightower almost had a seat there on the bench. Well, the Blue Demons will be 2-1 and one on the year with Western Michigan. The Broncos coming in here on Wednesday night. And Illinois State looks like uh, Donovan needs to retool a bit. They'll be 0-3 for the first time since 74. They played well against Purdue and flattened out at... University of Wisconsin, Green Bay, and they really have their problems against this aggressive ball club. Right? If their blocks a shot, gets a foul. You know, he's lost 92 games uh, since being there, and nine of them have been to DePaul. Demon's giving him some pits. Hebner attempting the block here. One of the things you you got to keep that hand straight up and try to block. You bring that hand down, referees have a tendency to call a foul, regardless of whether you get him on the wrist or not, but uh, he was guilty that time. That was first, the fifth against DePaul. Roberts is Right. Missed that one, and that's the first miss. Of missed. The <laughs> that broke the glass on that one. <laughs> that's the first miss tonight. <laughs> oh, really? For the, for the club. They were nine out of nine in the first half. That's the first free throw they've shot here in the second half. And the ball have made ten in and out. So There's a the violation. Fair. Hebner by violation went into the lane. So I'll take away the miss, give them another try. So that doesn't count as anything. <laughs> I always That's thought that was kind of a, a dumb thing to do, but I guess I've never really been down low that I had to box out, so I, I guess there's probably a tendency to want to jump in there. Hepner leaves, checking in for the first time this year. Proposition 48 last year, 6'10", sophomore from Brockton, Mass., number 50, Curtis Jackson, for the fall. Well, Roberts gets the second one to fall, so he gets officially credit one for two there, three out of four tonight. I think Jackson, uh, Joey, he did not practice yesterday because of an exam, and Joey didn't feel like he was complained tonight unless it was very limited, and of course that's the situation. He's going to say he's he feet looked, wet a little bit. He looks like a colt, about two-thirds of them are legs. An arm, too. He's got long legs and arms. Yeah, he's, he's a large size young man, 6'10", 240. He looks like he can move pretty well. You know, he's... It's good to get a guy in this situation, you know, to get him in the ball game, to get him in the flow. Of course, I, you know, a, a rule I disagree with, uh, Proposition 48, he was not allowed to play that. Hey, turnaround jumper by Jackson and nothing but the ball. Hey, he didn't even hesitate, did he? I'm not sure he looked. I think he fired and then looked. <laughs> he didn't even put it on the ground. Boy, he just got it and went up. Well, he certainly knew what he wanted to do with it when he got the ball. 24 points to fall lead, 76-52. Roberts, a leading one-hander, won't go. Neiman. Tied up by Pemberton, and the over possession gives it to Illinois State. Now getting set to check back in. Looks like uh, Holland coming back in. No, no, no. Oh, that's, uh, this is, uh, this is Chris Henderson, number 25, a 6-6 six, six sophomore, another proposition 48 of a year ago. He's a local lad from Leo High School here in Chicago. And Andy Lauk sits down. Well, what a nifty job defensively Andy did tonight. Added eight points to the DePaul cause. But his main effort was uh, defending Jeff Harris. Yeah, he did. He did a nice job. Harris not quick, but can really fill it up. As you'll he gets those feet straight, he's going to throw it up. And Andy played real good defense away from the ball tonight. Made him work very, very hard to get his shot. It looks aggressive time strike with 2.08 to go. DePaul with the ball in the lead. 
Henderson had it slap loose, kind of a lackadaisical dribble. Yeah, he's got to learn to protect that ball very well. Baseline shot this time. Jackson missed it long to the left. Two three zone for DePaul. They're just going to sit back and make Illinois State beat him from outside. Roberts fires from the left way. Short arms and gets his own rebound back, but Jackson guards the baseline. He wheels it out back to play. Minute and a half to go. Blair falls down all by himself, got into the fourth, and got lost. Here comes James Hamby, the seven foot, one inch sophomore from Elgin. As I mentioned, 167 of the uh, Elgin youngsters are here tonight. And Holland gets a big ovation because the fans know that uh, he's somebody they need. Kevin Holland sets down with a career high 11 points for him. A uh, nice job. And Kevin Edwards out of the ball game. He's all right. He had some kind of game tonight. He surely did. 21 points, but that only tells part of the story. He Probably must a half had, a dozen steals. He must have had at least a half a dozen steals in his hand on a half a dozen more that caused turnovers. I don't know how many assists he got. And they the shot underneath. They got a big team in there now. Yeah. <laughs> Seven one, six ten. So he's never seen so much height. Roberts fires. Nothing but the bottom of the net, but it was short. And a foul on Handy underneath. James' first foul. There's a look at our True Value Hardware Store Player of the Game, Kevin Edwards. And a check for $100 will be presented to DePaul University, courtesy of True Value. The money collected from the True Value Player of the Game Award goes to the Ray Meyer Scholarship Fund. Kevin Edwards with 21 points, our True Value Player of the Game. Free throw by Jeff Harris is good. He's three for three. Gives him 15 in the second place for Illinois State tonight. Misses the second free throw. Tipped out where Neiman gets it. The ball leading 76-53. Right side. Jason Toons in there now. The tennis player. Right on. Racket man. <laughs> they want him to fire. They want him to get a hoop. He's a walk on. Ball tipped out of bounds. Baseline by Pepperton. DePaul gets it back, 41 seconds to go. They got a lot of inexperience in there now. Toon hardly ever played. You got two Proposition 48 guys. You got a freshman. And a sophomore, Hamby. And Hamby got limited time was, last year, if any. So there's not much experience. Oh, he was redshirted last year. Shot off the front, no good. As Neiman missed a try for three, and the Redbirds come down with it. Pemberton up to the short jumper. Won't go. And high in the air for the rebound is Curtis Jackson. Jason Toon with it. 26 ticks to go. Two on the right wing. This is in low. Jackson turn around jumper rimmed in and out. Boy, he's not like afraid he, to put it up, is John, it? it looks like it's kind of soft, too. You know, it's not one of those banging hard jumpers that clangs every time he hits the rim. Looks like he's got a soft touch, but it's tough to get your legs in there when you come in late in the ball game like that. And Jackson with a rebound. Oops, forgot something, namely the ball. Harris reverse him. In with the left hand. 76-55. That's going to do it. DePaul.